In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to the chapel at Harrow House for the annual Ecumenical Harvest Thanksgiving service as part of the Haddo Arts Festival 2020. Everything seems different this year. No audiences for the concerts, no congregation for the service. But we are pleased that the festival is taking place in the virtual reality of the internet. We thank you at home for joining us in this service, joining us in spirit. In fact, you are the congregation at home, and you are encouraged to join in the prayers and the hymns and the silences and the reflections as best you are able, giving thanks to God for all his goodness to us, especially for the many gifts that we receive in the arts, and of course, at this time of the year, in the harvest. So, let us pray. God of generous love, we offer this short time of prayer and reflection in thanks for the goodness of God's creation, for the beauty and wildness of land and sea and air, for our daily food, for our farmers and fishermen, and for those whose work and skill brings food to our tables for the light and shades of the changing seasons, for their variety and beauty, for new life and growth out of what can sometimes seem to be dead, we bring our thanks to you, good Lord. Awaken our praise and thankfulness so that we may truly acknowledge our need for you and commit ourselves more fully for the care of the earth that you have given us. We make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our first hymn, We Plough the Fields and Scatter.
reading from Psalm 148. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, ye heaven of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath also stabilized them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons, and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapours, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. We sing together our second hymn, Come ye faithful people, come. For those who are participating in this service at home, I'd like to begin this reflection by noting that we are in the chapel at Harrow House in Aberdeenshire. Since 1881, when this building was dedicated to the service of Almighty God, free from all ecclesiastical restrictions, the Haddle Chapel has continued its ecumenical witness. From March to October, normally each year, leaders from various Christian denominations come here to lead services to the glory of God. I am blessed to have been coming here for 23 years, most recently during the Music and Arts Festival, to to preside for the Harvest Thanksgiving. This year, of course, everything is different. COVID-19 has taken its toll on the Haddo Chapel services and on the Arts Festival. But something else to be thankful to God for, we are able to use the ingenuity of the internet to make much of the festival available on YouTube, including this service. Everything is different this year, with 
social distancing, with illness, with death on our door. We pray in this service for all those who are most affected by everything that the coronavirus has brought to God's people. But the harvest is in, and successfully too, I am told by those who work the land in this beautiful part of Scotland. The relief and satisfied exhaustion that accompanies this time of the year for those who work in the land might not be shared directly by all of us. But if we think back to a few months on the shortage of some supplies during lockdown, when we may have become more acutely aware of and therefore hopefully more grateful about those who work to provide our food and our everyday needs. Harvest Thanksgiving can be a time to awaken our praise and thankfulness for everything that God gives to us. Even the gifts of creation that are the smallest can be visual aids to awaken our appreciation and wonder at God's goodness, giving us joy while also perhaps alerting us, warning us about the earth's resources and the interconnectedness of everything. At this time of the year, these give great joy to children, I hope, because they used to when I was a child. I hope children today have fun playing with chestnuts, conkers, or we used to call them chessies. I wonder if the local children of Methlick and Tarvis, looking for the biggest and hardest of these nuts, come to raid the Haddo estate so that they can win the fights they will have with their pals at school with their chestnuts. The seed for the chestnut tree gets diverted from its intended purpose in autumn each year by school children as they play conkers with them. And the seeds are probably lost. Their potential for growth never fulfilled. I'm sure, however, that God looks down on children having fun with their chessies. I'm sure he is smiling when he sees them having fun. But I doubt if he is still smiling when he sees what Robert Burns described as man's dominion breaking nature's social union. The beautiful song sung by Catherine points out that we and this world are the Lord's vineyard. He has given it to us, but it is ravaged and destroyed. And so in the psalm we ask that the Lord will visit us again and restore what was always intended before we messed it up. It's as if God is reminding us that we are meant to be custodians of the earth, not masters of the creation he handed on to us. But even in this psalm, we see that all is not lost because his help will enable us to share what we have begun to mess up. The vineyard, of course, is a land of grapes, which, when not destroyed by us, but nurtured, produce a harvest for which we are truly thankful, ultimately producing wine, wine of joy, wine of getting together and companionship, chosen even by the Lord Jesus as the sacramental sighting of his precious blood in holy communion. But like the Lord dying on the cross and pouring out his blood for us, that grape each grape has to be crushed and squeezed and destroyed so that it can be reborn into something new and even more beautiful, the wine. 
Our Lord also used the image of wheat. Each little seed placed in the ground is lost, buried, appearing to human eyes to have died, at least sleeping beyond our sight, sleeping in peace, perhaps, beyond our understanding, before it can be born anew and produce a harvest of plenty. And when we care for this wheat and turn it into flour and nurture it and use our human skill for good, we turn it into bread, food which nourishes us and again, like the wine, delights us. Chosen even by the Lord Jesus as the sacramental sighting of his precious body in Holy Communion. A great image too for the Christian experience in the death of a loved one. May they sleep in peace and rise in glory. And then we heard in our gospel passage about the mustard seed, identified by our Lord as the smallest seed growing into a magnificent bush for the birds to come and nest and sing and feed. This image of the birds coming into a beautiful tree which came out of a tiny seed reminds me of St. Francis of Assisi who was so connected to nature apparently that the birds and the animals didn't run away from him so he would preach to the birds and they would listen to him. Oh, that we would listen to St. Francis 900 years later because he preached gratitude for the harvest, for the wonder of creation, and challenged us to recognize our part in it, the interconnectedness of everything. Brother Chestnut, Sister Wheat, the image of the mustard seed encourages me to have hope because even now when the world is in the darkness of pandemic uncertainty, chaos, even as we gradually become more aware, I think, of climate change issues, what we have done to the earth, even in our personal lives when struggles overpower us and darkness takes over, the tiny mustard seed of hope, which can become something great, can be our light at the end of the tunnel. It reminds us that the smallest possibility of growth can be a promise for a positive future. The smallest effort that we make can be a major contribution to the good of God's vineyard, God's kingdom, creation, the earth. David Attenborough recently laid out the facts for us in his extinction program. Pope Francis has done the same, and they both encourage us to take better care of our planet. And more and more, I believe, we are waking up to the realities of climate change, to the damage that we have done, but also to the opportunities there are for us to restore God's original intentions, to restore God's creation for the common good, looking after the earth, and all and everyone in it. Maybe this will be the best way for us to give thanks at harvest time. We must ask God to awaken within us that true gratitude for all that he gives us, a gratitude that will involve us being committed to better custodianship of the earth's resources. Because we are sometimes like mustard seeds, and it seems our contribution can only be a small one, a humble one. Let us pray for a wee while in silence now, deciding what we are going to do in our own small way to give thanks for God's creation by being better custodians of God's earth.
I invite you now to stand in prayer. These prayers are taken in part from the encyclical of Pope Francis Laudato Si. All powerful God, you are present in the universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with your peace, that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes, bringing healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who only look for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing. May we be filled with awe and contemplation to recognize that we are profoundly united with every created thing and every person as we journey towards your infinite light. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love, and peace. Give comfort to those who are suffering at this time. The ravages of cancer and COVID and all the illnesses of mind and body. Grant strength to those who care for people who are sick or dying. Grant insight to those who seek to find cures for sickness and disease, and patience for those who wait in hope. And for those who have died, we pray in confident hope in your power to restore life to all remembering especially in this place Alexander Gordon, the late Lord Aberdeen, to whose memory the 2020 Arts Festival and this service is dedicated. May he and all those who have died sleep in peace and rise in glory. We ask this and we make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask everyone now please to join in the Lord's Prayer using whatever words are familiar to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Catherine Williams will now sing a solo, The Lord Bless You and Keep You, by John Rutter. Please be seated.
We are nearly at the end of our service now, so it's appropriate that I thank the National Trust for Scotland for making the chapel of Harrow House available for us for this service. I'm sure everyone is grateful to Roger and Catherine Williams for their musical contribution, for Tom and Torquil for the technology, and for Joanna and Andrew for reading for us during this service. I encourage everyone to check the Haddo Arts website and the Facebook page to find out what other events can be viewed on the internet in the coming days. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulce Do, et Spes Nostra Salve. A te clamamus, exules fili heve, a te suspiramus, Gementes et flentes in hac lacrimarum vale. Ea ego, advocata nostra, illos tuos misericordes oculos ad nos converte. Et Jesum benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O
Haddo Arts could not present this year's festival without the generous support of their funders. In a normal year, significant and vital additional income from ticket and programme sales would supplement the grant and sponsorship funding. However, this year's virtual festival will be available for free. So please, give what you can to enable them to carry on planning and delivering arts events at Haddo by visiting www.haddoarts.com and clicking on the donate button to give online. Or send a cheque payable to Haddo Arts to Haddo Arts Administrator the Estate Office, Mains of Haddo, Tarvis, Ellen, AB41, 7LD. Thank you.